Hey everyone, it's Sevi. The much-awaited Dendro Archon has finally arrived and let's get straight to the point. Nahida is an incredible character that lives up to her Archon status. If you've been enjoying your Dendro teams and want to take them to the next level, Nahida is that. She's an all-around unit who can be both an amazing DPS and support for, well, basically any type of Dendro team. As much as I'm impressed, this isn't me telling you to get her whatever it costs. Is she an absolute must-pull that you'll never be able to enjoy Denjo teams if you don't have her? Of course not. You're going to clear the game and get your Abyss full star clears regardless. But she is a very, very good pull that can do a lot for your Denjo team building, and I can see her being a staple Denjo unit in the long run. So in this video, I'll go through her kit, mechanics, constellations, artifact, and weapon builds to help you understand her potential. And since there's a lot of things Nahida brings to the table when it comes to teams, it's hard to cover all that in a single video. So I'll be releasing follow-up video guides focusing on her team comps and synergies. Stay tuned for those and click that subscribe button to get notified. Let's get started with Nahida's talents and gameplay. Nice to meet you. My name's Nahida. I want to hear all about your travel stories. Nahida's normal attacks are a 4-hit combo with standard ICD. These are mid-ranged attacks launched in a line in front of her, which gives them the potential to hit multiple enemies that are lined up properly. Then, her charged attack is a stronger attack with a separate ICD. It summons this cube that collapses to damage a target area. It can also be used to damage multiple enemies, though they have to be fairly close together to be caught in its AoE. Chaining these normal and charged attacks are relevant if Nahida is used in an on-field role as these are a source of dendro damage application. You can use them to create various combos for different levels of efficiency. Using charged attacks more frequently can mean faster dendro application but at the cost of more stamina drain, while using more normal attacks helps conserve more stamina. Moving on, Nahida's skill can be cast two ways. Pressing it will hit enemies in an AoE around Nahida to damage and mark anyone that was hit. Holding it will create this viewfinder that you can move and hold up to 5 seconds. Enemies that are tagged by the viewfinder will get damaged and also be marked. Her skill can mark 8 enemies maximum. Its range reaches pretty far, and it will even tag enemies that are obscured by other enemies or structures as long as they're within range. Holding the skill, panning it, then letting go quickly is quite easy to get the hang of, but the skill also has a relatively short 6 second cooldown so that if any enemies evade your mark, you can just recast the skill soon after. So what does this mark actually do? Marked enemies are linked for 25 seconds. By triggering a reaction on one marked enemy, or if they take damage from a dendro core, it will trigger Tri-Karma Purification. This deals simultaneous dendro damage to all linked enemies. The Tri-Karma trigger has an interval of how often it can be procced. The base interval is every 2.5 seconds, so this can be reduced by Nahida's burst. And good news, the casting damage and Tri-Karma Purification procs have no ICD. As a multi-target ability, this talent is a valuable source of Dendro application or reaction damage whether Nahida is on-field or off-field. Compared to previous Denjo units, this means of Denjo reapplication is more reliable and convenient. It doesn't rely on a circle or area you have to stay in, and it's simultaneous application to multiple enemies. All you have to do is mark them, and it stays for a long time, then reapply the mark if needed. That is, if they're still alive. Regarding her particle generation, whether or not the activation hit triggers a reaction, no particles are generated. Instead, particles are generated when Tri-Karma Purification is propped, which again means triggering a reaction on marked enemies or hitting them with Dendro Core damage. From what I've observed, she generates a constant 3 particles, but there is a cooldown of about 8 or 9 seconds between instances of particle generation, and this can be triggered whether Nahida is on-field or off-field. Moving on to her burst. When cast, Nahida summons the Shrine of Maya, which covers a very large AoE in the battlefield. It doesn't do any damage or apply any dendro by itself. Instead, it's meant to give Nahida buffs as long as your team is inside its area. The buffs it gives depend on the number of pyro, electro, and hydro units in your team comp. Each buff has two levels depending if you have one or two members of that particular element. For Pyro, the character count gives Nahida's Tri-Karma Purification a damage bonus. For Electro, it decreases Nahida's Tri-Karma proc intervals by a certain amount. Again, the default interval is 2.5 seconds. So for example, if you have two Electro teammates and the interval reduction at talent level 8 is 0.6 seconds, then your new 
new Tri Karma interval is at 1.9 seconds. But note that in practice, you won't always be able to consistently take full advantage of the reduced interval rate since it's also dependent on how fast you can trigger reactions on the affected enemy as well as the timing of your reactions or bloom hits. For example, your new interval rate might be 1.9 seconds, but if you proc a reaction 1.8 seconds in and your next reaction will be procced in the 2.2 second mark, then the Tri Karma will proc at that 2.2 second mark, not sooner. Still, the interval reduction can ultimately translate to faster Tri Karma procs. Then for the Hydro buff, it simply increases the duration of Shrine of Maya, thereby prolonging the uptime of Nahida's other buffs. In relation, Nahida's A1 passive adds another buffing effect to her burst. As long as you're within the Shrine of Maya field, it adds EM to the active character based on 25% of the highest EM of the character in your team. The maximum EM that can be added is 250. It's a very good support utility, and for an on-field Nahida playstyle, it further boosts her damage. Okay, so the effect is pretty simple, but there are special interactions that are worth noting regarding the calculation of the EM buff. 1. The Shrine snapshots the highest EM in the team that will be calculated for the buff upon its casting. Any changes in the EM of that party member after casting will no longer be factored in the added buff. Here's an example. Albedo has a 125 EM buff to his teammates when he casts his burst. Let's compare using Albedo's burst before and after casting Nahida's burst. If Albedo uses it before, the resulting EM of Nahida is higher. If Albedo uses it after, the EM of Nahida is slightly lower. That's because her shrine snapshotted Albedo's EM buff and factored it in the calculation of the EM shared, whereas it did not in the latter case. Then, even if Albedo's EM buff expired already, the shrine still adds the same amount of EM. It does not get reduced since, again, Nahida's A1 buff is a snapshot, not a dynamic calculation. So, if you want to maximize the EM her A1 passive gives, then be conscious of the order of your team's EM buffs if any. 2. If there are flat EM additions like Dendro Resonance or Instructor Set, then it is factored in the 25% calculation of Nahida's A1 passive. However, it seems that an EM buff that is percent based, particularly Sucrose's A4 passive which adds a 20% of her EM, is not factored in. Then this passive does not work with specific weapons. For example, Wandering Evenstar and the Staff of Scarlet Sands both have attack buffs that are based on the holder's EM, however they do not increase even with Nahida's A1 buff. On the other hand, Hunter's Path has a charged attack damage bonus increase that scales with EM, and that does get affected by Nahida's A1 buff. Lastly, there are also other talents that ignore this buff. For instance, Sucrose and Kazuha's A4 passives, which buff EM and elemental damage bonus respectively, do not count Nahida's A1 EM buff in what they add. Anyway, those are just some particular interactions behind it, and there are more that can be tested for verification, but you can totally ignore thinking about these to avoid further complicating things. Moving on, Nahida's A4 passive involves her own EM stat. Each EM point beyond 200 gives Nahida a 0.1% damage bonus and a 0.03% crit rate for her Tri Karma damage. Since it's particular to just one talent, the added scaling will not appear in her stat page. The effect caps at 1000 EM, counting the starting 200 EM, resulting in 80% damage bonus and 24% crit rate added. This is a nice passive that makes EM have further means to scale her damage and it also makes building her crit stats less painful. Finally, Nahida's exploration passive is the most fun one yet, in my opinion. Using her skills viewfinder mode allows for an instant pickup of harvestable goods, which is very convenient for hard to reach things or if you're just lazy. It has an interesting effect on NPCs too. If you aim her viewfinder at someone, it allows you to read thoughts, though it seems to only work in Sumeru NPCs that have names. It's a fun way to experience her unique Archon ability. Rukshaw isn't from the desert, but he's pretty cute. For talent priorities, if you're playing Nahida off-field, prioritize her skill then her burst while leaving her auto attacks alone. But if you're playing Nahida on-field, you will want to level up all her talents. If you're not sure what to do next, how about I take you on a walk? Now let's see what her constellations do. Let me first emphasize that Nahida is incredible at C0 already and constellations are very unnecessary. They are mainly damage upgrades for Nahida or her team. 
C1 adds an extra count for every buff of her burst, guaranteeing at least the level 1 effect of each element. So for example, even if you don't have a pyro unit on the team, Nahida's burst will give her the level 1 buff associated with pyro. Though it sounds great, the damage increase from this constellation isn't that noticeable in many scenarios, unlike her next constellation. C2 seems to be her best constellation as it enables crazy effects on enemies marked by her skill. First, it allows Burning, Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon damage to crit, so these are fixed at 20% crit rate and 100% crit damage. Regardless, that's already a significant boost to such teams. Second, it gives a 30% defense shred for 8 seconds to enemies that get affected by Quicken, Aggravate, and Spread. Note that Nahida and her teammates will all be able to take advantage of this defense shred. This makes it a DPS increase not just for Nahida, but for her entire team. If you really, really are aiming for her constellations, this is the best one to stop at. C3 increases her skill talent by 3 levels. C4 gives her an EM buffing mechanic depending on how many enemies are marked by her skill. It's nothing fancy, just another damage increase. C5 increases her burst talent by 3 levels. And finally, C6 gives her an extra source of damage called Karmic Oblivion. This is triggered by activating her burst, marking her enemies with her skill, and hitting enemies with her normal or charged attacks. It's a source of huge dendro damage which lets her front load big damage and speedrun content. Obviously, it's overkill already. Again, Nahida is amazing at C0, but if ever, C2 is her best stopping point. Something on your mind again? Let's work through it together. Two heads are better than one. Next up is how to build her artifacts. We'll start with her preferred stats followed by sets. Although Nahida still has attack scaling, she prefers EM stats more because of her passive buffs, additional EM scaling, and reaction damage playstyle. There are possible variations to her piece's main stats depending on how you use her. If she's mainly an on-field spread carry, you'll want to build her with an EM Sans, Dendro Damage Goblet, and a Crit Circlet that gets you close to a 1 to 2 ratio or an EM Circlet. Considering Nahida's passives, if she has the highest EM on the team, she will want at most 800 EM. Her A1 passive will turn that into 1000 EM with her burst. Then through her A4 passive, that will give her the max crit rate and damage bonus buff. But between an EM and crit circlet, the damage difference will be quite small. So choose the one with better substats and remember that Nahida can get EM buffs from various sources as well. If she's used as more of an off-field support role, you can assign her more EM main stat pieces and even go for a triple EM build. Giving Nahida the highest EM on the team will allow her to function as an EM sharer through her A1 passive for whoever the on-field teammate is. This can help for Bloom, Burgeon, and Hyper Bloom teams if the trigger character is on-field and can buff any other kind of reaction DPS like Aggravate. Again, note that her A1 passive caps at 1000 EM. As for her recommended energy recharge, if you're playing her on field, it can range from 100 to 130% ER since she's catching her own dendro particles and enemy particles. But if she's mainly off field, she'll need more ER. 130 to 160% is a starting range, but as always, this can vary according to teammates, the number of enemies, particle generating, and ER enhancing equipment, so test according to your own setup. For her substats, you're looking mainly for EM and crit rolls, and enough ER to cover her energy requirement. Attack percent is much less desirable compared to EM, but it's not completely wasted if you do get some rolls. Then for her two artifact sets, Nahida simply has two ideal artifact sets to aim for, making her very straightforward to build. First is the 4-piece Deepwood Memories for its Dendro Damage Bonus and Dendro Resistance Shred. If no one else on the team is already using it, having her equip this will generally be preferable to boost your team's Dendro Damage and Bloom Damage. However, two instances of Deepwood's Dendro Resistance Shred do not stack. If someone else in the team is holding Deepwood Memories already, this set will be redundant on Nahida. So the next best set will be the 4-piece Gilded Dreams. It boosts her own EM, which improves her damage and support utilities. It can have a smaller attack increase too. Alternatively, Nahida can hold two-piece combos of deep wood or EM sets. Pick pieces that give you the best substats. What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is. Now, let's take a look at Nahida's catalysts. Thankfully, she's got very good selections from free-to-play friendly to expensive weapons. 
Starting with our three stars, we have two good options. The first is the Magic Guide, which is easy to recommend as a cheap to build, free to play friendly, and solid weapon, even as a three star. Despite its low base attack, it gives a relatively high EM stat. And thanks to its passive, which gives a damage bonus against enemies affected by Hydro and Electro, it also synergizes well in such teams. The second is Thrilling Tales, which is a niche option, but one that can be situationally useful if she's buffing an attack scaling carry teammate. Now let's go through her recommended 4-star options. The Solar Pearl is one of her best 4-star weapons, especially for an on-field carry playstyle. It's great since it gives a damage bonus buff to both her normal attacks and skill damage, which also affects her spread damage. However, this weapon's passive is underutilized if she's mainly an off-field unit. And of course, it's locked behind a battle pass purchase. Next is the Widsith, another one of her best 4-star weapons and potentially more accessible since it can be acquired from any banner. It's also best used in an on-field carry playstyle. Any one of the random buffs it gives can be utilized by Nahida, but of course, the EM or elemental damage buffs are way more preferable. The Sacrificial Fragments is a solid choice thanks to its high EM and accessibility. Nahida can proc the skill reset effect very reliably, especially with multiple tagged enemies as long as she's on field. This means you can trigger consecutive reactions with her skill activation, which is particularly nice for triggering spread reactions quickly. The Wandering Even Star is also a solid choice as Nahida utilizes both its EM substat and attack buffing passive. It also has slightly better value if she's with teammates that appreciate the team-wide attack buff it gives. Unfortunately, it's a limited banner weapon from the previous weapon banner. The Maba Mare is a solid and free-to-play friendly option. Nahida will appreciate its high base attack, EM stat, and elemental damage buffing passive. However, if you haven't crafted one yet and want to save your resources, you can just go for the Magic Guide, which is close in strength, until something significantly better comes along. Lastly, the Favonius Codex is a niche recommendation, but it can be situationally useful if your team values the energy particle generation for consistent burst uptimes and smooth rotations. Finally, her 5-star options. A Thousand Floating Dreams is Nahida's signature weapon. It gives the highest EM of any catalyst by far, its passive synergizes perfectly with her playstyles, and it also provides a small EM buff to her teammates. Kagura's Verity is another top 5-star option thanks to its crit damage stat and its skill damage buff which synergizes well with her playstyle. Then lastly, the Lost Prayers is another solid 5-star choice, though not as good as the aforementioned ones. It's mainly a crit rate stat stick and at least it's more accessible than other 5-stars by losing on the weapon banner or just pulling from the standard banner. Thank you for allowing me to be your companion and for teaching me so many new things. Finally, we have her teams. Again, I will have a separate, more detailed video regarding Nahida's team comps, synergies, and rotations. But to start you off, I'll briefly discuss Nahida's team building potential. Let's briefly recap what Nahida does well for her teams. One, she provides a way to conveniently and consistently reapply Dendro on multiple enemies, whether she's on field or off field. Two, she can be the one to proc or set up reactions for your teammates. Three, she can be a spread DPS unit that is used on field. And four, she has an EM buffing support utility that helps increase your team's reaction damage. With all she can do, Nahida will slot very well into our existing Dendro team templates. First, she can be the Dendro unit helping maintain quick and uptime for her Electro Aggravate teammates where Nahida will be off-field most of the time. She will still be doing considerable damage since her Tri-Karma Purification can proc spread damage on each tick. Alternatively, Nahida can also be played on-field as a spread DPS. Until now, Tignari has been the main candidate for such a role, but Nahida will also be able to dish out lots of damage with her adorable hopping animations. Flex units can include more Electro or Dendro units or supports that won't disrupt Quicken reactions. For Bloom teams, Nahida's amazing Dendro application definitely improves the generation of Dendro cores. In regular Bloom teams, Nahida can serve as an on-field driver, but as an off-field unit, Nahida's Tri Karma needs to be proc consistently in order to maintain uptime on her Dendro aura. If enemies are no longer taking Dendro core damage or receiving reactions, Nahida's Dendro will run out too. As always, the flex slots can be another Dendro, Animo, Geo, or Cryo. 
For Nilu Bloom teams, Nahida is a good upgrade to the currently limited roster. She can slot into the 2 Hydro 2 Dendro format or she can be a solo Dendro on-field driver. Since she's viable as a solo Dendro that way, there is some flexibility for a third Hydro unit without sacrificing Bloom generation. The main concern if she's on field is that she does need very reliable healing to stay alive from all the Bountiful Core self-damage. For Hyper Bloom and Burgeon teams, the team format will be as usual. What's interesting though is that by keeping your Electro or Pyro Trigger on field, they will gain an EM buff from Nahida's A1 passive. So even for the cases of Kuki, Raiden, and even Toma who could fully do their Hyper Blooms and Burgeons from off field, they can be on field to receive that EM boost. With slower Hydro application, Hyper Bloom teams can gain some quicken uptime, which Nahida could be on field for in order to get an extra spread damage. Then, thanks to Nahida's ability to reapply Dendro on enemies, she can enable burning teams and, to some extent, even reverse melt teams. Note that the burning aura does not re-trigger simply with pyro reapplication. Once the burning aura has expired, the enemy will have a pyro aura on them that needs Dendro application to reapply the burning reaction, which Nahida's Tri-Karma procs or auto attacks help with. To take this a step further, you can comp in cryo units to reverse melt. Proccing melt reactions with cryo units re-triggers Nahida's Tri Karma, which keeps the burning going for them to melt. However, there are some challenges to maintaining uptime on all the reactions, so this needs more testing to determine the best teams and rotations. I'm excited for players to try out Nahida with different teams and stretch the limits of Dendro with her. I found her very fun to play and she feels like a good upgrade to the Dendro reaction teams we've already been working with up to now. As I've said, I think she lives up well to her Archon status and for sure, there's going to be a lot more room for her to grow. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you think of her if you've gotten a chance to try her out or if you already have her. That's going to be all for this guide. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care! As the god of wisdom, I grant you my blessing. From here onward, may your journey be free from confusion that clouds your mind and obstacles that block your path.